every time I pull a print, it's like the first time. It's a passion for me. It's a total passion. I mean, it just, it just courses through my veins uh, all the time. It's a, a controlled, planned process that still leaves an element of surprise. It's almost like having a baby without the pain. And then you can always say, would you like to see my etchings and really mean it. There is so many, so many things to learn and so many things to try. Start with regular etching, traditional etching. That would be to clean a, a copper plate and uh, file the edge, and then we would paint a, a light uh, ground on it. It's like a waxy, a waxy liquid, and then with an etching needle, you would draw line uh, drawing through through this ground, and then we etch the drawing, and so the etch line would be permanent on the plate and be inked and printed and then we would do aqua tint which is a way to get tone tints on on this surface and then we do a soft ground which would be textures you know like uh, fabrics or all kind of texture we would put a soft ground run it through the press and then put those those fabrics and those fabrics would go right through the ground and then we would etch those textures that would be permanent on the plate and we could also do sugar lifts, which are a painterly effect of painting a syrup of sugar on the plate and then cover it with the ground and put it in hot water and the hot water melts the sugar and lifts the ground and then you have your painterly brush strokes effect on the etching plate. So those are all the traditional ways of working on plates uh, before photography. And uh, so that's one way. And then also we can work with uh, uh, monotypes on plexiglass uh, for a very uh, immediate reward. You can just uh, use either water-based paint or oil-based paint on the plexiglass paint, either by layers or all in one shot, and then print it on an etching plate. And that will give you some result very different from a regular painting because the way of printing makes it uh, it, the result is very, very different. It's graphic, but it's also very subtle with watercolor effects. And so those are monoprints. That's another technique. One of the greatest things in printmaking is the layering because we can do either several plates with several colors and, and double or triple print, or we can just add to it. You know, we can print something and reprint and reprint, and we can do. Um, multiple image, multiple exposures, and, and um, we're doing a lot of uh, transfers, toner transfers, and uh, so it, it keeps on being interesting. Printmaking was my major in college in France, and when I came to the United States, I um, traveled a bit and then registered at the Art Student League, where. I worked for 10 years and I, now I teach there too and it just, I just stuck with it. I actually specialized in every photographic techniques uh, combined with printmaking and this is what, what I am really specialized in now. So I taught myself photography and I'm combining photography with lithography, with etching, uh, with, now we're, we're actually doing digital 
uh, printmaking as well and so it, it keeps on going and I, I try to uh, actually uh, research and teach the latest techniques. Sometimes we, for example, make a Xerox on acetate. Basically the image has to be on, on the transparency with some kind of a half tone and the Xerox has some kind of a, a dot, a half tone. And then we take a copper plate and we laminate that plate with an emulsion that is light sensitive. It's a photo emulsion. And we, we basically laminate the plate with it. And then in the dark room, we put the uh, acetate, the transparency, on that laminated plate. And we have a light exposure unit that they bought when I started teaching here. And we expose the plate with that acetate on it and the light make, make the emulsion hard where the light area are and it makes the emulsion soft where the dark area are. So then we develop the plate in a very non-toxic thing, it's a soda ash, it's like a soap. And the emulsion basically develops itself in the image area and then we ink it as an etching plate. Basically, we rub ink on it and we wipe the surface and we print it on an etching press. So what we do is photo etching. That is the process of photo etching. And we do a lot of experimentation in my classes. I, I always encourage people to just try things out, try things new. Well, there are themes that um, run through some of my work. Um, some of my photo etchings, I've taken pictures of my family, very old pictures, and I've put them together with old pieces of lace. And I've compared the old lace and the condition of the old lace to the relationships of the people. So if someone wasn't really a great person, I put them together with maybe a piece of lace that's kind of old and ripped and worn to simulate them. I get my inspiration from a million different places. Sometimes just seeing photographs, sometimes looking at my own photographs that I've taken all over the world when I've traveled, and I do my photo etching with that. Then I do lithography with getting ideas from magazines from a million other places, looking at other people's work and saying, hey, I could do something like that, and I do it. And you can do etching on a plate without using photography. You can draw your own picture on the plate, then put it in acid, etch it, and then ink it and print it. So there are many different things you can bring with it. Whatever talent and creativity you have, you can certainly use in printmaking. I was a painter, but I'm still a painter. I still paint, I still do collage. I do a lot of different things, but lately I've been doing a lot of printmaking and incorporating some of that into the printmaking. But I still do watercolor and other things. And I still love my photography, which is a basis for the photo etching. And there are so many processes and so many techniques that you cannot possibly ever be bored. You can use some of the techniques together, and it's just limitless. Well, you don't have to draw. You can use image transfers. Well, that's what I like about it, is uh, that you're able to tear things out of the newspapers, if, you know, current, anything current that's going on, the war or something. If you want to make a statement about the war, you can tear the image out of the newspaper and do an image transfer, put it directly on the paper, put some citrus cell on it, and it, and it reproduces right onto the paper. So there are very simple techniques for when you're starting out. This is a little house in Vermont that I thought was quite charming. It was painted a kind of purple color with pink and flowers and chickens running around. Uh, now this is the, the print after we've done two colors. The first color we run is yellow and the second is magenta. And I kind of like the looks of it so I'm afraid to experiment with it. Uh, then we go to the third color which is blue and I don't like what's happening here. Maybe the ink is too old. Maybe I didn't ink it properly. These two I did in blue. But Three colors, yellow, magenta, and blue. The next one would be black. So since I don't already like it, I'm gonna put the black over these two and leave this alone and ask the teacher what to do. These are the plates. After you uh, have put your image from the photograph into Photoshop and done whatever you want to do with it, you separate it on the computer into three colors and then you run it off in black and white, or even though the colors are separated. And you need a laser printer for that. Um, this is your, these are your plates. Now we use these 
different sections to make a large picture. Ordinarily, the, the image would be an 8 by 10 or letter size. So these are the, after we get these plates come out of the computer, then we ink them in the three different colors. Now, these are the blue plates. The, uh, the yellow plates and the magenta plates have already been cleaned and put away. Take some ink out. And you, so, and you have to loosen it up. It comes out thick. So you mix it up a little bit to get it pliable. If you still don't have what you want, you might add a drop of oil. This looks pretty thin, so I'm not going to do it. After you have it to the consistency that you want, make a line across here. I've already done this, so this looks silly. Put your roller on it. And when it's good and when you think you have even coverage, and it's as thick or as thin as you want it to be, you take your plate, this is my first plate, put a few drops of water down, wet the plate, and you do a roll up. Alternately, wiping it and inking it. If you're losing some of your white spots, you might want to clean it up with a little of this fountain solution uh, cleanup. Uh, yeah. Could you pick it up, Penny, I guess, if you like turn the dial? All right, this is, this is the first one. This is all the fern at the bottom of the picture.